Here's my full book review of Shift by Hugh Howie, the second book in the Silo book series. Oh, hi, Mark. What's up, Fichero fam? Welcome back to my channel, where I'd like to explore everything that life has to offer. Let's get right into it. As you can see, I have the Silo book series. I've already done a video about wool, which is the first one. And in this video, of course, like I said, I'm gonna talk about Shift, the second book. So let's pull it out. I do have a link listed below to the box set. I'm gonna show I'm not affiliated with Hugh Howe or anything, but this box set on Amazon, last time I checked, is $28. If you were to buy each book individually, it would actually cost you more money. So I'm just telling you, way better deal to get this. And there's a couple things I'm gonna say right in the beginning of this video before I get into the book. One, I'm not gonna give you any spoilers. I try to film my book reviews in such a way that if you've not read the book, you can watch it and not worry about anything getting revealed. But if you've also read the book, you may be very curious to hear what I have to say about it. The second thing I wanna say in this video is I've officially completed and read the entire Silo book series. My goal for this video kind of series, I'm doing a video about each book, was to read a book, do a video on it, and then read the next book. After reading Shift, I was like, okay, I can't wait to film this video. I'm just gonna immediately go to Dust, the third book. So I've read the entire Silo book series, which is kind of a perfect segue to jump into this book. I gotta be honest, this was my favorite book of the entire Silo book series. Now, in case you don't know about Silo and the entire concept of the series, to kind of sum it up in one or two sentences, a bunch of people are living underground in a silo, and for whatever reason, they cannot go outside and they don't know why. That's the premise of the entire Silo book series. And as you can imagine, a lot happens. Now, what's interesting about the progression of the books is the first book, Wool, is about kind of what's happening when people are living in the silo. Shift, however, is kind of a prequel to Wool, where it kind of gives you the backstory of how did they get to being in the silo? Who built the silo, um, et cetera, et cetera. Of course, I'm not gonna reveal anything in this video, like I said, and when it comes to Shift, it gives you the entire backstory leading up to Wool. I have seen some people on Reddit talk about what order you should read the books in. I know that's a bit of a debate where some people say, oh, maybe you should read Shift first or read Wool first. I still think you should read Wool first and then shift second. Read the books in the order they come out in. That's my personal opinion. But as a side note, like I said in the Wool video, I think it's actually best to watch the first season of Silo on Apple TV, then read book one, then read book two, then read book three. At least for the exact time of this video though, unfortunately, Silo season two has not come out yet. So who knows how, how I'd put that in kind of the, uh, the equation of the book versus the TV show. But in general, read the books in the order they were released. And like I said, going back to this book, it was definitely my favorite book out of the three. This book was super intense, very, very dark. Like the first book was such an amazing read. You know, I kept like flying through the pages and everything, reading it as quick as I could. And definitely very intense, very dystopian as well. This book, compared to like say the first one, which I thought was very interesting. The first one, like I said, had a very sci-fi dystopian feel to it when I was reading. This one, I feel like just had a straight up dark feel. Like the amount of stuff that happened in this book, I just remember reading it being like, whoa, that was super intense. And what I really like about this book, which was kind of annoying, but I think it's clever. Because of course, Hugh Howie is a phenomenal writer. What was kind of like annoying, and I mean that in a funny way, is this book has two different storylines going on at the same time. So one chapter will be about one storyline, and then the next chapter will be about the other storyline. And what made that frustrating, we've probably all been there, where you're reading a book, you're like, all right, I gotta go to bed, it's late. You're reading a book, you get to a cliffhanger, you're like, all right, well, now I have to read the next chapter to figure out what happens. We've probably all been there too when it comes to a TV show, for example. And what's tough about this book, and I mean this in a good way, like I said, kind of an annoying way or a funny way, is you almost had two different cliffhangers going at the same time. You'd be reading the one story, and you're like, oh my God, this just happened. And you could not wait to hear or see what happened next, but then Hugh Howie would jump to the next story. Get to that point in that story, we'd reach another cliffhanger. Like, well, I wanna see what happens next when it comes to the story. And then it would go back to the other story, right? So we gotta go back and forth. And of course, at a certain point in this book, the two stories kind of interconnect in a very clever way. The book continues up to the end, being around the same ending as Wool. So both the first book and the second book kind of conclude or finish off around the same timeline. So I really loved, especially when it comes to this book, 
how it kind of intersected with wool in a different way. Like some parts of it were, seemed to be a little bit parallel as well. So it's very unique the way this book was written, which is why I loved it so much. And it's crazy because after reading wool, I was like, wow, that was such an, you know, such a crazy page turner. And this, I felt, was almost like double that feeling of, oh my God, I cannot put this book down. The book itself um, is about like 600 pages. I read this and I think four sittings, three or four sittings. I mean, I remember there was one night, like the last night when I actually finished the book, it was a Saturday night. I could have gone out and I decided not to go out. This happened with Wool too. And I decided just to stay in and read this because I was so invested with this kind of like double, I don't think I've ever read a book like this where it almost had double cliffhangers going at the same time, where I almost even wanted to kind of like skip over some chapters to see what was happening in like say the first story or see what's happening in the second story. For me personally, I don't think I've mentioned this yet in some videos, I prefer nonfiction or fiction, just for me personally. However, there are a few fiction books that just really jumped to mind. And this, I gotta say, is one of the best fiction books I've ever read. I said that about Wool, and I say this tops Wool, which is kind of, Hard to believe because Wool was phenomenal. This book was, I think, one of the only few books I've ever read that I was really trying to like speed read or read as quick as I could because I could not wait to get to the next section or see what happens. If I really think about it, the only other book that I had that same kind of sensation with in terms of that intensity is Prey by Michael Crichton, one of my favorite fiction books of all time. And this one, again, such a phenomenal book. Definitely like five or 10 times as dark for sure. I mean, definitely way darker. Like I almost felt like, and just my own personal perspective, that it was almost like a different author. Of course, they're all still Hugh Howie, of course, but I almost felt like the tone that he had in this book had a very different tone than the last one. I think Will was kind of more of explaining what happened, progression through the story. It felt like a bit of a dystopian adventure slash like sci-fi. This one just felt, super, super dark, more like a dark thriller or psychological thriller, of course, with sci-fi elements and everything. But I gotta say, especially now that I've finished the Sallow book series, this one, definitely my favorite book out of the three.